Hey, I guess you recognize these guys, huh? Pretty familiar. Two different containers. One, a toothpaste tube. The other, a kind of aerosol can. What's the difference in these kinds of containers? The difference is that one has the material compressed. And so, for instance, if I open up the toothpaste tube, it just stays there until I squeeze it out. But if I open up the valve on the aerosol can, the material bursts right out because the compression inside the can is much greater than the compression of air outside here in the atmosphere. And this will continue to burst out. I don't have to squeeze the can or anything. Well, the reason I'm showing you this is because these really represent the two different ways that you can get air out of your body. You can either treat your body like a toothpaste tube and squeeze it, or you can treat your body like an aerosol can and have the air burst right out of there spontaneously. I prepared a couple drawings here to help explain better what I mean. You notice in the first drawing that the person is taking a full breath. Good. Kudos to him or her. A good full breath. But then uh, when the blowing begins, you'll notice that the abdomen begins to contract because it's pushing the air out, essentially squeezing the air out, much like your hand would squeeze the toothpaste tube to get the toothpaste out of the tube. In the second one, second drawing, you'll notice the person starts with a good breath, super good so far, but then what happens is the air is pushed down. The direction or the energy the air is pushed is, is, uh, is down. It's pushed down to compress the air and um, to make it denser inside so that the body sort of feels a little bit like an aerosol can would, a little kind of uncomfortable, you know, uh, like there's a lot of stuff in there that really needs to be uh, gotten out. Well, these two methods of blowing produce completely different uh, qualities in the sound and also uh, give you one gives you a lot more endurance than the other and uh, most people start in uh, breathing and blowing on the clarinet they start by using the toothpaste tube method um, if you're a person who's breathing through at the shoulders like in the first example and then using the toothpaste tube method to squeeze that air out you're getting uh, extremely inefficient use of your air um, and you're probably not very hot at playing long tones. It, it's not a matter of being big or not a matter of being strong uh, when you can play those long tones and sustain them quite a bit. I'm not a very big guy. I'm about five foot seven um, and uh, but I, in you know in my playing days I could sustain a note for a minute and 15 seconds, a minute and 20 seconds on one breath. Uh, and easily a minute because I knew how to breathe and blow correctly. Well, this has to be practiced, and if you're not breathing and blowing as we outline here, then you really need to work on it until you can do it properly.